for her. <laughs> the tapes. Our first practice tape. I met Sean Williams in the first grade and we were on and off friends for a long time. Um, Sean learned how to play guitar in third grade and then I picked up the guitar in eighth grade. Well, I uh, used to come over to Trey's house and uh, bring my guitar and then uh, he got a guitar and he started learning stuff on his own and then started to play stuff together and then, you know, I said, hey, we, you know, we should do something with this. And that's pretty much how it started. And then in 2014, I made a demo tape called The Rain Cloud Above My Head. And after I made the tape, I was trying to get a band together to play the material on it. So then I contacted Sean and asked him if he wanted to form a band and he said yeah. We started out under the name Do It For Her, D-I-F-H. And it's pretty embarrassing to think now. Yeah, it was a pretty dumb name, but we played under that name for our first gig at my friend Emily's house. His name Trey, yeah, they, uh, they invite to go to Emma Van Gorsen's birthday party. Play there. And, uh, so, you know, we, we got all our stuff, we pumped, practiced all the stuff, like, four, we were ready. It was me and Trey on guitar. And, uh, the next day we pack up all the stuff, drive out there. We get there, you know, we talk to everyone, then we start setting stuff up. And they had a they had a DJ there. And uh, DJ was pretty cool. Because he let us uh plug our our mics up into his uh his, his system there. But man, we were terrible. <laughs> we were just the two people. Glorified Nirvana cover band, I'd say. Uh, I saw, tried to sound like Kurt Cobain, but I think I sounded like Kurt Cobain if he was constipated and smoked 10 packs of cigarettes a day. So we start, we start playing. I remember we were playing Teen Spirit to open the show, and during the solo, my microphone fell right on me, and. So I totally messed up the guitar solo, and then this guy comes up right in the middle of the song, like the third verse when I'm singing, and he goes in my ear, and he's like, oh, you guys are going to be stars if you keep playing like this, and pats his pocket, because he has a bag of weed in there, and then he later got kicked out of the party. I, I don't remember the exact set list, but I remember... Trey was like, Sean, you gotta do plush, man. And I got real nervous and I didn't want to do it. So I kind of whisked it out there. So we played another song. I forget what song it was, but I remember Trey's guitar string broke. I was like, oh shit, no, that's not good. And then I think it might have been the same song in the next, but my guitar string broke. One was dead. So we just. We ended it right there. We were done, left it at that. And the crowd was very mixed. There were a bunch of people that were drunk and high that loved it and everything. And then there were some people who didn't like it, like saying, you're wasting valuable stage time. And, and you think I'm bad, these guys got me beat. And stuff like that. So after we got cut off by it, went to the DJ to give him a bro hug and he pulls me in the bro hug and he's like you gotta start somewhere kid you got balls of steel so we got the name Rusty Nipple during our second gig um, my grandpa is a butt of a lot of jokes and this one is no exception uh, 
my dad had a camo hat and it had this bolt on it that looked like a nipple and we were like oh it's a rusty nipple and then he was like oh pops has rusty nipple yeah, i remember someone saying pops has rusty nipples so then when we went to play i was like oh we don't have a band name because we ditched d-i-f-h and uh everybody just started chanting rusty nipples rusty nipples yeah! rusty nipples <laughs> Kept it as the name because we thought it was a great name. <laughs> so we uh we went over to uh Trey's aunt's house. It was uh it was Ty's graduation party. So yeah, we get there, you know, we're all pumped the night before we get excited, you know, practicing all our shit. And uh, we get there, you know, start talking to people, bring our guitars up, we're not plugging in this game, showing people you know. And the second gig was fun. It was a lot better than the first one. We had no strings broken, but this time we didn't have microphones so like we did in the first one, so we were just screaming and yelling. I'm not familiar with Who needs the mic? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know if Sean sung it that gig. And then it's, you know, actually time to plug in. We uh, talked about the night before I was going to play Say It Ain't So by uh, Weezer. And, uh, sure enough, I pussied out at the last moment. And Trey was like, you need to play it, man. You need to play it. Man. God, dude, I'm not doing it. I'm scared. I'm not. I don't know shit and stuff. Like, all right. And then him and his dad pulled me aside and he was like, Dad, Sean's not going to play Say It Ain't So. Sean, you need to do it, man. The people are going to love it. I just refused. I wouldn't fucking play it. So I, I get really nervous easily. It was just... It was cool at the time, uh, but we didn't have mics, so we had to fucking yell loud. And we, it was just me and him on guitar, too. Trey had this huge amp, I had my little red amp, and it was, looking back at it now, it was kind of ridiculous. Yeah, it was bad. But at the time, pretty cool. Yeah, but all in all, the early months were uh, pretty ridiculous. Uh, we were just a, a duo with two electric guitars, no bass, no drums, and screaming in the microphones. It, it was just ridiculous looking back on it. But, it, you know, I really look at them as fun times, too, because... I mean, hey, it's the rusty roots, you know?